So my next vlog is with James Gibbons. He's from a company called Quater. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that. I'm probably pronouncing that completely incorrect. He's been there for you know a couple of years or so, and he's been in the SEO, SEM space for a while. So I'm looking forward to talking to him. Honestly, I have no idea what we're talking about. We didn't discuss it beforehand. So I'm sure we'll prepare a little bit beforehand and we'll get into those topics. So hopefully you enjoy this interview. Um, I'll have a bunch more scheduled in the future. I'm looking forward to meeting and actually driving to some places in the future. He's coming to my office, so it should be good. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Finding a good SEO partner that specializes in content marketing can be hard. Since 1999, Internet Marketing Ninjas has built its reputation on SEO and content marketing strategies. Internet Marketing Ninjas is run by Jim Boykin. I've known Jim for close to 20 years now. He's been a very hands-on SEO. He's a very hands-on CEO as well and he's built a great team at the Internet Marketing Ninjas. From what I hear, their clients are very happy with them too. The Internet Marketing Ninjas could also help you with your core web vitals and page experience update. They're very hands-on with that. They'll make the changes for you, not just provide the audit. So check them out at internetmarketingninjas.com. Thank you, James, for coming out, meeting with me. I uh, appreciate it. Um, so can you just tell, tell me basically a little about yourself, when you started and so forth? Yeah, so I've been uh, working in the SEO industry about 10 years or so. Uh, started out in the legal SEO uh, world. Uh, thought I was going to go to law school um, and found this job, lawyer.com, uh, and uh, that was a online directory. Uh, and of course, legal SEO, very competitive space. And so that quickly got me sucked into SEO. And from there, went to some agencies in New York, Akron Media, also uh, Sapient Nitro and then went in-house at uh, Skyscanner, leading the America's efforts there for their uh, organic performance. And now in the tooling space at uh, Quarter, where we're developing uh, enterprise uh, technology, AI technology to maximize uh, organic traffic growth. It's funny, because when I, before you came in, I did a little intro and I pronounced the name, I think Quarter, but it could be pronounced Quarter, and you had the whole Right or reason around that? What's yeah, that? You, you could call it a uh, quarter, uh, quarter, quarter, however you, you want to say it. Um, but it is it's essentially a growth acronym because everybody knows financial quarters, of course. Right. Uh, but uh, Q is U A T T R. Uh, everybody wants graphs that are up and to the right. Right. Uh, so there's some uh, logic behind that name. Awesome. Um, and now you're in the SaaS business running this search product called Quarter that basically help, helps businesses, I guess, see what they should perform on with recommendations and so forth? Exactly. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities uh, in, in search. Uh, and when you join all of the data together and you unify that data, uh, Google Search Console, Google Ads, Google Analytics, Adobe, other uh, clickstream data, you can then apply a machine learning uh, to enrich that data and create a, a, a data lake, if you will. From there, you can then process the data in a way that normally would be a manual effort. And now uh, brands and organizations are able to uh, have technology working while they're sleeping and essentially have a recommendation engine uh, as kind of one of the byproducts of uh, all of that technology so that you can actually know what to do next. Uh, so often people are just looking at reports continuously, dashboards, and they in their minds have to interpret what to do. But essentially uh, the technology exists, the machine learning AI is there so that you can have actionable steps on which landing pages to uh, rank uh, which performance issues are the most impactful uh, and, how, and un you're unlocking competitive insights because you're able to kind of also scrape uh, the web at large and incorporate uh, all that together and feed that into to your uh, AI. Interesting. So you no longer need a professional SEO that knows how to interpret the reports, the reports will interpret themselves with your product, pretty much. Well, brands are able to take action. Right. And have that be completely data 
dr driven right. in a unified source of truth. We talk about this a lot where you need to hire, especially if you're very involved in the SEO community, and anybody who's really, really passionate about their jobs, they feel as they should, and they have a right to, that their experience and their knowledge after being an SEO for 5, 10, 15, 20 years um, is an asset above and beyond whatever Google Analytics reports or search console reports you get because you understand that this data means to act in this way or not act in that way. Um, whereas your tool, I think, is kind of giving additional tool sets, maybe not replacing the experienced SEO, but kind of giving them more tools to say, yes, you should make this decision or no, you should not. Exactly. And you know, part of, of Quarter, what we're trying to do is of course, builds the most amazing technology possible, but that is on top of a human layer, right? Uh, to navigate, you know, all of the issues, of course, uh, that happen when you know certain models are kind of built and they're just continuously having wrong data. Um, so, with Quarter, the expertise is able to go a lot faster um, and really tap into the expertise. Uh, which is kind of having the uh, validation to uh, create content um, that is completely data-driven versus, okay, let's just pick a topic and go about doing that. That is that is one approach, and it can be successful if you're very rigorous on testing and you know doing that, but um, you know it's causing you more stress to kind of do it that, that way when everything can really be uh data driven and then you decide how you know that that's where the creative element c comes in uh because you need to actually think about what you actually want to do that actually may not even be in any data source so brands are able to tap into their brand expertise um in the sense that they're not worrying about pulling reports from excel various tools and just aggregating it together and yeah it can be right i mean the amazing. future is i mean everything is machine learning ai you know the search platforms both on organic search web search and paid search they're all pushing their machine learning stuff there's no re i mean most companies are investing tremendous amount of money in either licensing tools like yourself or bu building their own internal tools pulling from data to make these decisions or help them make these decisions and that's to that point there that's you know Brands do not need to uh, boil the ocean when it comes to certain marketing technologies. Uh, they can tap into uh, what we're building a quarter uh, to have a kind of jump start on the whole journey of building a robust both uh, growth slash marketing uh, organization. Right. That makes sense. And again, it's, it's something they could pay monthly for and jump right into as opposed to spending years and years building what you have already. If we, well, just to be clear, I'm a huge fan of automation. I'm a huge fan of not making um, human emotional decisions. Um, I, I I like that. So just, just to go on record, I'm not, you know, if we could, rep I think at most SEOs would be like, if I could replace my day job with a machine, so be it. I'll just check in every now and then from the beach. Great. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. But I like to talk a little bit more about your, your history. Um, a lot of that is meta description creation, I'd imagine. It could uh, be. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope it's larger than just meta descriptions, but you know, um, I mean, the tools are just going to get better as more of and course. more data feeds to it. And GPT three and the related models are going to be a lot more uh, actionable. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and you know, before it's a, or kind of currently, it's a auto suggest and steroids. After there is some new technologies where you're able to tap into a data set um, and incorporate that into the GPT-3 model. Uh, so you can ha have factual information as part of the natural language generation. So uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, movement in kind of these AI writer uh, That kind tools. of scares me a little bit because once you, I mean, there are a lot of it happening, especially in this like stock market or those press releases around earnings. Machines mostly write that content, at least for the base of it. Well, though, uh, yeah, that stuff it makes sense, but something that is more uh, subjective editorial right. gets extremely complicated. Right, and it's getting there, and it's kind of scary because you'll see how much content is being pumped out now. Once you start having machines start writing the opinionated pieces, 
it's 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 never ending. Um, anyway, um, let's get a little bit more into your I guess your history. So, you've been doing SEO for about what ten plus years now. Yeah, and your first you were first at Lawyer.com doing that, which is pretty cool because, like you said, the law, legal space, especially back then, I think in twenty eleven or so, twenty twelve, I was just around when Panda and Penguin were out, and legal SEO was probably very very into producing lots of lower quality content. To generate a lot of leads, um, and then that whole space kind of shifted around when Panda re- was released. Do you remember anything around that, or was it already after Panda? Uh, I think it was a little after, uh-huh. slightly. So you're already producing the high quality stuff when you first got there, probably. I forgot. <laughs> I always get the names mixed up: Panda, and Penguin. So Panda was the uh, content uh, issue. Panda one. The content. Penguin were links. Gotcha. Okay. So Panda came first, then Link, uh, Pen- Penguin came after. Um, but by Penguin time, it seems like you already jumped over to Acronym. Were you there with Mike Graham? Uh, right. He joined uh, while I was there. Um, and I think he's recently he leaving. He just retired, yeah. Uh, retired. Yes. Uh, but yeah, um, an Acronym, great uh, place to work. Uh, and very cool um, you know, search agency. They you know, specialize in search. Uh, and I think I have been around a very long time you know one of the first search agencies i forget what the specific credential was they were actually developing some technology which is interesting uh because when i was at acronym that's when keyword not provided uh came out and of course everybody was freaking out to say it to say the the least um and you know because people could track down to the specific keyword the conversion right um and uh, Acronym was building a tool, uh, keyword objects. I think they still use it internally. Um, and of course, when that happens and you have a keyword tool, what, what do you do? Right. Um, so they actually made a patent, uh, keyword not provided patent, um, which kind of took a bit from Bing uh, keywords and then kind of sampled some keywords. But then you get to a problem where what happens if there's new Key- keywords, how do you put it into the system? Um, so, yeah, that was very interesting. But some really great clients, uh, a lot in the uh, hospitality space. Um, Four Seasons I was a client, Fairmont. I uh, did a lot of metadata, Fairmont hotels. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think maybe some of it still is, a, is live, which is something a veteran SEO when you are an enterprise clients, it is interesting to see if you still have metadata that you've done years ago huh. that's still alive. Uh, I just think that's cool. Cool. And then you moved on to, I think it used to be called Razorfish, now it's Sapient. Uh, is that true? Or make yeah, or Sa- Sapient originally, then Sapient Razorfish, and then it was actually bought by Publicis. Now, now it's Publicis Sapient. Um, or it's safe being raised a fish, I forget. Uh, and they have all, like, all these holdings. Was that remote or they have you went to an office? Yeah, seems... that was in New York. In New York. They have offices um, all over the place for my, a lot of people in that space. I know yeah. Brian Jones, I think, works for them. Mm-hmm. Um, Brian Usury, I'm pronouncing his name wrong probably. He was on the blog. Um, so a lot of well known SEOs are in that space, work for that company. So that's cool. And then you went into the, the the software business with you said uh, Sky Scanner. Yes, you know that's a B two C company uh, in the travel space. Uh, you know everybody wants cheap flights, hotels, car rentals, uh, and of course there's some big players. You know Expedia, Kayak, yeah. Priceline, um, and Sky Scanner is a British company uh, from Scotland, uh, and they were um, you know looking to grow in the Americas region. Uh, and then, of course, they were bought by Ctrip uh, from China uh, as a ho- holding company. So, you know, we, we were really trying to grow across not just the U.S., but, uh, you know, Canada, Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, Colombia, right. uh, all of those markets. So that was a scenario where, you know, looking at market by market growth and international uh, is uh, really you know, interesting when you're comparing the metrics on a regular basis, finding trends, uh, and kind of extrapolating that to another market and whatnot. Cool. 
And that's what kind of got you into this. Your own co- you own the company? Uh, quarter? No. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're one of the, uh, what's your job title? You see, look at here. Senior customer success manager. So you yes. onboard a bunch of customers and you're involved in sales Yes, well, I am an early em- employee. Uh, okay. So, you know, with startup life, you do wear many hats. Uh, so, you know, I do primarily customer success, uh, a lot of the pre-sales, solutions architect, sales engineering, um, and uh, I also need to do some more blogging, uh, but of course, that cool. takes time. Um, cool. All right. Awesome. So let's get a little bit into um, some of the uh, SEO topics you wanted to discuss.